Hi everyone, I'm Pedro Watson and I'm just going to give this uh, a short e-presentation as a bit of a teaser for our upcoming Goldschmidt talk, Cumula Origin for Ishwa Donites Rules Out Formation as an Eoarchean Ophiolite. Um, this talk is taking place on Wednesday the 7th of July at 9.40 Central European Summer Time and it's in uh, session 3D which is on the transition from uh, pre-plate tectonics to plate tectonics geodynamic regimes on Earth. Um, this study was, uh, uh, is, is based on uh, some work which was a pretty big collaboration between uh, myself and Christopher Silas at the University of Copenhagen, uh, J.M. Guatana, Ikuya Nishio and Tomoaki Morishita at the University of Kanazawa. Um, just like to single out J.M. here for some really, really good petrographic work which has um, definitely played a big part in this study. Uh, Kenny Chiriotani, who's at the National Museum of Nature and Science in Japan and Sarah Woodland, Helen Legro, and Graham Pearson, who are all at the University of Alberta in Canada. So I'll just get started um, giving a bit of background and talking about why it matters whether the issue of supercrustal belt is an ophiolite or not, and uh, what, what the Dunites can, uh, can do to tell us about this. Um, so I'm just going to start with a, a plot of a uh, histogram of ophiolite occurrences through geological time. And this is modified from uh, Stern and Miller 2017. So as you can see, they have a lot of ophiolites uh, forming in the Phanerozoic and um, a fair few going back to the Neoproterozoic. But as you go back through geological time, the number decreases. Uh, this is a little bit of an end member view, but Stern and Miller have that there's absolutely no ophiolites forming in the Mesoproterozoic whatsoever. And they have this little cluster occurring around 2 billion years ago in the Paleoproterozoic. And I think these are probably some of the oldest, uh, oldest ophiolites that everyone will agree on. Uh, the Jormio ophiolite in Finland is probably the oldest widely accepted. Many authors say that there's really no ophiolites in the Archean whatsoever. And this is why Ishua is so striking. Um, it's formed of two uh, chunks or, or, or terrains um, or belts. Uh, one formed about 3.8 billion years ago and the other at 3.7. Um, but if this truly is an ophiolite, then this would be the oldest on Earth by, by some way, possibly by a couple of billion years, or um, at least by a few hundred million years if other uh, ophiolites do exist in the, in the Meso- and Neoarchean. So the potential that there's this ophiolite right back at the start of the rock record is really worth investigating. Um, the issue of supercrustal belt is found in the North Atlantic Craton. Uh, this is mainly located in Greenland. There's uh, smaller chunks in Northern Labrador and Northern Scotland. And there's a range of uh, crustal ages here from about 3.8 all the way down to 2.5. The craton's dominated by uh, TTG or tonalite, trongemite, granodiorite, gneisses. Um, the Ishra supercrustal belt is found in the Itzhak gneiss complex, which is a predominant, uh, predominantly TTG gneisses older than 3.6 billion years ago. And just zooming in here, you can see the Ishra supercrustal belt. Um, in green is the 3.7 uh, billion year old sequence and in light blue is the 3.8 billion year old sequence. Uh, and you can see that the, uh, the 3.8 billion year old kind of wraps around the outside of the belt. And both of these sequences are associated with TTGs of a similar age. So inside the belt next to the green 3.7 billion year old sequence, we have some 3.7 billion year old TTG gneisses and outside the age is uh, more like 3.8. So, a lot of people have, uh, a lot of authors have debated whether Ishra is an ophiolite, so it's worth starting with what our definition of ophiolite is. And we're using this one from Dillek and Ferns 2011, which is that an ophiolite is an allochthonous fragment of upper mantle and oceanic crustal rocks that is tectonically displaced from its primary igneous origin formation as a result of plate convergence. So I really wanted to focus here on um, evidence that, uh, that the Ishra supercrustal belt might be allochthonous. And there's been a number of lines of evidence presented before. Um, there's been arguments that Ishua contains a sheeted dike complex, which would obviously indicate oceanic spreading, potentially in a Bacock basin or a mid-ocean ridge. But uh, other authors have argued that um, this sheeted dike complex was actually mistakenly uh, misidentified amaralic dikes, and that the geochemistry is not compatible with the mid-ocean ridge setting. There's also been suggestions of progressive metamorphism. This would be uh, kind of changing uh, peak metamorphic grades across the northeastern part of the belt, but um, more recent studies have shown that actually there's very, very consistent peak metamorphic grades across the entire issue of supercrustal belt, and it's actually the degree of uh, retrogression that varies. 
We've also had arguments uh, that there are major thrust faults in Ishua, either as part of an accretionary complex or as a uh, major suture zone between the 3.7 and 3.8 billion year old sequences. But more recent work again has shown that the structure is actually remarkably simple, uh, it's basically near homogeneous uh, strain in a shear zone and that essentially the whole belt can be described as, an, as a major A-type fold. Um, there's also arguments based on geochemistry, that we have an arc-like geochemistry of tholeites, uh, bononites and andesites. Um, but more recent work has shown that the bononites are actually low titanium basalts. And I would really question here whether geochemistry can be used to indicate that something is allochthonous. And in all this mess, we have the, uh, the lens A and B donites, and these have been interpreted as mantle rocks thrust into the supercrustal sequence. Obviously, if this was true, this would indicate major uh, thrust faulting on a crustal scale and would be good evidence that at least part of the Ishua sequence is allochthonous. But most of the Ishua ultramafics are crustal cumulates and this is pretty widely agreed upon. So in this study we wanted to revisit lens A and B which are kind of the holdouts. These are the bits that are still interpreted in a mantle framework uh, unlike the rest of the uh, cumulates in the belt. So looking at where lens B, uh, A and B are a bit more closely, um, these are two relatively well-preserved donite lenses which are located within the tholeitic amphibolites in the western arm uh, in the 3.7 billion year old sequence of the Ishua supercrustal belt. We visited these in 2017 and 2019, did some uh, detailed field work, um, took a bunch of samples and uh, we have studies coming out on the petrography. This is mainly led by uh, JM. And then uh, the, the subject of this talk will be primarily the geochemistry. So just zooming into lens A here, we have a high resolution drone image over the uh, lens, um, which you can see is actually relatively small. It's only about 100 or, uh, meters or so across. And only a small core in the middle of that is donite. Zooming in even further, uh, we'll have a quick look at the petrography, which I'm not gonna spend too much time on. But basically we're gonna take a look at the petrography and the geochemistry of these rocks and argue that these are in fact not mantle rocks and that they do not require major transcrustal thrusting to put them into the sequence uh, issue. In fact, they're uh, geochemically um, identical to cumulates that you'd expect to form from the tholeitic amphibolites that host them. So if you want to hear more about that, uh, come to the talk on Wednesday the 7th of July, 9.40 a.m. Central, uh, Central European Summertime um, in session 3D. Uh, the study was funded by a Carlsberg Foundation, and I'd just like to give a bit of credit to uh, John Boyce on YouTube, who inspired the style of this video, and he does a lot of very interesting, quirky videos on sports. I'll just leave you with the references here, and I hope to see you all at the talk. Thank you very much.